So how's this for a scary situation? This is from the Associated Press. The melting of Antarctica is accelerating at an alarming rate with about 3 trillion tons of ice disappearing since 1992, an international team of ice experts said in a new study. In the last quarter century, the southernmost continent's ice sheet, a key indicator of climate change, melted into enough water to cover Texas to a depth of nearly 13 feet, scientists calculated. All that water made global oceans rise about three-tenths of an inch, 7.6 millimeters. From 1992 to 2011, Antarctica lost nearly 84 billion tons of ice a year. 76 billion metric tons. From 2012 to 2017, the melt rate increased to more than 241 billion tons a year. 219 million metric, metric tons according to the study Wednesday in the journal Nature. Quote, I think we should be worried. That doesn't mean we should be desperate, said University of California, Irvine's Isabella Velicogna, one of 88 co-authors. Things are happening. They are happening faster than we expected. Part of West Antarctica, where most of the melting occurred, is in a state of collapse, said co-author Ian Joen of the University of Washington. And then they go on to say, unlike single measurement studies, this team looks at ice loss in 24 different ways using 10 to 15 satellites, as well as ground and air measurements and computer simulations. So what they're saying is, um, this is authoritative work. This is like the final say kind of work because they measured it in so many ways that they're sure of what they're talking about here and their measurements. So the idea that parts of Antarctica are in, quote, a state of collapse, kind of concerning. But I think what's so depressing to me is the total disconnect between the reality of the situation and public policy. Because the only way to address this is at the government level. That's it. I mean, there's no... You can't, on a private level, address something this big because you'll never get everybody to do it and you need everybody to do it in order to address it. So we have a government in the U.S. that just pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement. By the way, the Paris Climate Agreement wasn't anywhere near strong enough anyway. But they even pulled out of that. And... um it, it genuinely scares me that you have people who are just so dense to the reality of the situation and therefore unwilling to do anything to address it because they think the whole thing is a hoax and not true in the first place. So what that means is an increasing rise of the sea level, but it also means... Famine, it also means drought, it also means w way more extreme weather events, it also means in some places fresh water running out, go talk to them in Cape Town, South Africa about that, that means wars over water in the, in, in third world nations, so, I mean, I don't know what else can be said or done to convince people, because every time scientists look into this, they come back and say, oh, FYI, it's worse than the worst case scenario. So if they keep saying that and people keep ignoring that, then what the fuck? I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming quickly a long-term pessimist. For a long time, I was kind of optimistic in the long run. I don't know if I'm optimistic in the long run anymore. I mean, it looks like humanity might be totally fucked. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it, I shouldn't be. Um, what we need to do to address this is move over to a 100% renewable energy economy. And we can do that. We already have the fucking capability to do it. It's just a matter of doing it. But we're not doing it because big oil funds at least half of the politicians in this country. And so they drag their feet on purpose to keep getting paid. And then the world suffers as a result of it. But, I mean, and also think about it, this could actually be an opportunity if we were being logical enough in addressing it. Because you can move to a 100% green renewable energy economy, but also this is what you your new New Deal looks like. It's in this realm. It's in this area. 
It is green technology. That's where you get your new New Deal and have tremendous job creation and tremendous wealth creation, in fact, at the same time, which is something the right should, in theory, favor. Uh, but no, there's we're still dragging our feet. And it, it is worse, without a doubt, in the U.S. than anywhere else in the world, because ultimately every country in the world signed on to the Paris Climate Agreement. We're the only ones that did. The only ones. You know, Syria was a holdout for a while, and Nicaragua was a holdout. Syria was a holdout because they didn't have their delegation at the table when this happened. <laughs> but afterwards, they're like, yeah, we signed on to it. And then Nicaragua was like, we don't want to do it because we want something stronger. And then finally, at the end, they're like, okay, this is the best we're going to get. Fine, we'll sign on to it. U.S. is the only country that pulled out of it. How does it feel being the village idiot on the world stage?